In these segments, we're going to talk about ground driving. First thing we're going to do is get you used to the concepts that will be involved. We're going to talk about the groundwork that you need to make sure that you can do with your horse with a halter first. We're going to talk about using your Vienna rein, which is using just one side of your driving reins, the inside, making sure that your horse knows how that feels going through your stirrup to your horse's bit. We're going to talk about which bits to use when you're ground driving so that your horse and you can have good communication. We'll talk about how to set up your saddle or your surcingle and how one has an advantage over the other. Then we're going to talk about using your long line so that you can get used to adjusting your reins, which is very different from adjusting your reins when you're, when you're actually riding. You're, uh, you clearly have these long reins. I've got 30 foot lines here. And then we're going to move into the round corral and start some ground driving. We'll go through the walk and getting your horse to walk around the round corral. And the round corral is a great place to start because it does a certain amount of the driving for you. You can understeer or oversteer and your horse is still going to move around in a circle. Once we can do a couple changes of direction, then we'll go ahead and get your horse to trot and then we'll get your horse to take up a lope or a canter and then we'll show you how to take your ropes off of your horse after you get done driving. In future segments, we're going to talk about driving in the arena in a much bigger and open space and then ground driving out in the real world where you can uh, use your ground driving skills to desensitize your horse rather than having to be on top of them all of the time, putting yourself in danger. So let's get to it, ground driving. Desensitizing with the long line. Before you're going to do any ground driving, you've got to make sure that your horse is very well desensitized to your rope. And I'm going to assume that your horse is desensitized to your short line, but you're going to want to make sure that you can go up and around your horse's legs constantly, that you're managing the long part of your rope. And we have segments on coiling versus looping your rope. You want to be able to go below your horse's hocks, especially on top of your horse's hocks, and there should be no kicking or complaining at all. You want to be able to go up and over your horse's shoulders. You want to be able to swing up and around like so. If you are already riding your horse and you haven't done any ground driving and you're just learning to ground drive for fun, then it would be even good to be able to sit up on your horse and swing that rope around a little bit. But you want to make sure, like Katie here, that she has absolutely no issues with this rope at all. Swinging it around, bringing it forward, going up and over her head right there. She should really have absolutely no fear. And again, right now, as my rope gets a little bit tangled up, I'm going to throw it down. And I'm going to coil it up, leaving my left hand nice and calm so that my rope is not swinging all over the place like this every time I pick it up, which is very distracting to your horse. If you want, put the belly of the rope on the ground, loop your rope up, and again, swing it around, around both legs. You're making sure that nothing is going to upset your horse. You're going to want to make sure that you do this, do this on both sides of your horse. I'm going to get everything organized. Good girl. Remember you're training two sides of your horse. You've got your on side and your off side, or the left side and the right side of your horse. Good girl, Katie's a little bit distracted with flies at the moment, so that's what she's looking around for there. And again, know your horse. Know is it that she's upset about the rope on this side, or is she now just upset about flies, which is what she is. And I can even help her out here a little bit by swinging my rope back and forth, good girl, and chase away some of those flies. Again, if I can bring this up and around, you have to be a little bit ambidextrous doing this. I'm using my left arm and I am, in fact, right-handed. And again, up and over. Practice that with your rope. The last thing that you're really going to want to make sure is that the horse is not going to react 
in any way or in an adverse way with the old cowboy turnaround. So get your rope ready. I'm going to go to the on side of the horse. And I'm going to lift this up and around. And again, she should have really no reaction to that. And I'm going to bring this slowly back over to her hip, down to her hock, and then gently pull it and ask her to step through. And again, I'm pulling. Good girl. Pull a bit harder, get in time with those feet. Very nice, Katie. Hi. Good girl. And then I would do the same thing on the opposite side. So I would just let her know that she did the right thing. I'm going to let her go ahead and tug at a fly. I'm going to bring this up and over. And she shouldn't be anticipating either. If she now starts thinking that she should start spinning in circles and, and doing all of this kind of stuff, you want to make sure that your horse knows that they should stand still. So again, I'm going to bring this around. And on this side of the horse, very gently pull. I don't want to be yanking her down or tripping her, but she needs to feel that line on her hawk. There she goes. And as she steps with that inside hind leg, pull a little bit harder. Good girl. So you need to make sure that you and your horse are comfortable with the long line. You need to make sure that you're looping and coiling it. Your horse should have absolutely no fear of the long line before you can do any ground driving. Groundwork review. Once you're both comfortable with desensitizing on the long line, you'll want to make sure that you review the groundwork exercises. Good girl, Katie. And I'm going to ask Katie to move off. And these ground review exercises are really for you to understand how your body position is having an effect upon your horse. It's not enough just to say, look, I'm going to go out and put some long lines on my horse and push her along. And uh, I'm going to work on a square here, move her up through some of her gates. Good girl. And as you can see, I have to wait on the corners and then push her and let her know that we're going to go forward. These are all the exercises that we talked about in the groundwork exercises. But if I get ahead of her, even just this far, she's going to want to stop and change direction. And it's very important that if you want to change direction, you know that you can do that. Good girl, keep moving. But if you are accidentally getting in your horse's way when you are driving, you're going to have two lines on either side of your horse and things get to be twisted up. And it is much more dangerous to have two lines crisscrossing your horse back around the hawks. And um, so it's very important that both you and your horse have a very clear understanding of what is expected from both of you. All right. I'm going to ask her to trot. She's going so slow. Hey, sweetie. Good girl. So all that's going to happen now is I'm going to make a slightly smaller square. I'm still going to slow down on my corners. Come on, sweetie. I'm still waiting for that saddle area. Oh, she cheated me on that cone. Oh, breaking gate girl. And again, I'm not looking for perfection because I'm not getting it clearly. Good girl. This time I'm going to ask for a little change of direction. So I just get in her way. Good girl. She kept trotting. I didn't think she would. Just giving her a couple of light clucks every once in a while just to say yes. I want you to keep moving. But again, I'm moving with her in her saddle area and I'm slowing my feet down, waiting for that saddle area, moving along. Good girl. She listened to me that time. Waiting for her. And now I'm just going to back up. You'll want to make sure that you're doing circles, squares, changes of direction, and then the, the cones in which you're going to the center, around the cone, and then to the next cone, and then to the next cone. And uh, so that you have a very good understanding of your groundwork, your body language, and again, handling this long line. 
And uh, I have a special orange line today. It's a little bit kinky and a little bit messed up. And so you can see I was mishandling it just a little bit. But you, as the handler of the horse, need to make sure that you have the skills to deal with whatever, whatever you've got attached to your horse. Setting up your saddle to ground drive. You'll go ahead and put your saddle on normally. And then the only thing that you'll really need to do is tie your stirrups together. This is very important because as you have those long lines through your stirrups, if they're not tied on, they'll have a tendency to lift up like this and smack against your horse's side, which is troubling enough as they get smacked. But the more difficult thing is that if they're not tied, then your ropes lose the leverage that they need to move your horse's head from side to side. So normally I would tie to the off side and, uh, or put a, you know, whatever string that you have. It doesn't matter exactly what you use. You just don't want it to be in the way. Start on the off side, go over to the on side and tie it. But for this purposes right here, I'm going to start on the on side. You want to go through, pull it down, and you can use whatever knot you're comfortable with. You can use a, a square knot, and you want to make sure that they're a fair bit tight, not so tight that it's going to, you know, be more upsetting than, say, your cinch. And, uh, you know, this is not too much that's hanging off there, but you still might just go through and put a little half hitch in just to get it out of the way. And these are all knots that you can take a look at in our sections about knots. And it's nice also if your stirrups are turned sideways like so, rather than laying flat against. But even if you tie tight enough, your stirrups that are laying flat will have a tendency to twist out. So again, that rope is going to go through here. And I'm just going to trust that Katie's going to be kind to me and not walk off. But as I take my long line and come through the stirrup and then connect to what will be the bit in just a few minutes, that again, this is not going to pull away from her side. It's quite firm right now. And, uh, and it's going to slide nicely through rather than being trapped and needing to twist first. And that's the way that you're going to set up your saddle when you're going to start your ground driving the saddle versus the surcingle. We've already got Katie set up in her saddle here. And again, all that's happened is you put your saddle on normally and then you tie your stirrups together. And then you're going to go through your stirrup and connect to whichever bit you're choosing. And, uh, and if I were going to drive, what I would do is I would loop this up and hang it then over my saddle horn go ahead and take care of the other side and then take that off, which we'll talk about in a future segment, making sure that that does not hang too low. And if it does, oh, she just heard someone talking to her. So the saddle really gives you a lot more control than a sur single. And the reason is because your saddle is pretty rough and gruff and with the stirrups tied together, even if something would go a little bit wrong, if you're working with a young horse or a horse that hasn't been driven before, you're going to have a certain amount of control and you don't have to worry about your stirrup breaking or your, uh, your leather uh, on your saddle breaking. So next we'll go ahead and compare that to a surcingle. Here I have a surcingle which uh, has an attached cinch. I'm going to go ahead and put this over Katie's back. And goes right up next to her withers there. I'm going to go ahead and easy sweetie. A few flies in the way here. And uh, go ahead and just tighten that up. With a sur single it's always a good idea to use a breast collar as well. And this D-ring here and here on the cinch you would go ahead and, and attach that. It will give a little bit more stability to your sur single. Now, these are the rings that your ropes will go through. And when you're first training a horse, you want to go through low, uh, on a low ring. So as you're first working with a horse, you'll use the lower rings. And uh, you'll come through and then attach. And it would be a level of development. As your horse gets used to working on the low ring, you would move up to the next ring, to the next ring, and, uh, and then move up as high as you can. How you doing, sweetie? Good girl. Now, the difficulty when you're training young horses with the surcingle is that surcingles are just not as rough and gruff as your saddle. And so these D-rings will tend to break out or, you know, full-on pull away. 
And so a sur single, I would say, is for a horse that has had a certain amount of ground driving that has some schooling already and is not going to need any very serious schooling poles or steers. Um, so as you're first learning to your ground driving, I would urge you to use a saddle. And it doesn't matter if it's a western saddle or if it's a dressage saddle. The saddle is going to give you a little bit more stability. And other things that will help as well, even with your saddle, would be the use of a brass collar or even a crouper or a cropper, if you prefer. But my advice, again, is that your saddle gives you much more stability. And the surcingle would be for a horse that's a little bit more schooled and a horse that is just about ready to go into a cart. And the reason is because they need to learn how to use, how to steer off these top rings when they're being driven in a carriage or in a cart. And that would be the use of the surcingle, not just for strict training. Choosing the right bit. I'm only advocating that you would use a full cheek snaffle or a D-ring snaffle for your ground driving. And the reason is because you want to get this lateral movement or the side-to-side -side movement as you're using your reins. And the full cheek snaffle, even though it may look harsh, it uh, is actually the nicest bit that you can use for your horse, especially for these lateral pulls. It's pressing against your horse's face where there aren't any bones or teeth sticking out, and it's pressing very kindly. And it would be the same with the D-ring snaffle. Uh, I would prefer that you're using, again, either the full cheek or the D-ring as opposed to an O-ring or an egg butt snaffle. If that's all you've got, then you can use those. I am urging you not ever to use a Tom Thumb, which, if you recall from our bit studies and segments, when you pull the Tom Thumb, what happens is it twists in the horse's mouth rather than pulling the head to the side. And so instead of getting this nice, you know, movement to the left and to the right, what you're getting is a twisting of your horse's head and pain with no real communication. That's what the Tom Thumb is going to do, even though it looks like a snaffle bit. This leverage throws off the communication. The other bit that I'm advocating that you do not use is your curb bit. And in a very similar matter, manner, as your horse has this in its mouth, and you go to pull this, again, you don't get this movement from, the, from side to side. You get a twist in your horse's mouth and head. And so you're causing confusion to your horse, not communication. So I'm advocating that you're using simply a full cheek snaffle or a D-ring snaffle, and that's going to be the most beneficial as you are doing your ground driving, especially if you've not done any ground driving before. Rain control. One of the things that you'll need to get used to before you start your ground driving is getting used to having two reins, very long reins. When I'm riding, of course, you just have a set of reins and you might have 18 inches, maybe two feet that you, of rein that you need to navigate. And we talked about a bite adjustment and going to two hands and hand adjustments, finger adjustments. But as you are doing your ground driving, it's a whole different set of skills that you're going to need. So here's a few things that you can practice before you go live with your horse. First, I have an orange rope and then a blue one. And I'm always going to keep them separated. Now, you can sort of walk with a rein in each hand like this. And that works really well if you're walking directly behind your horse. And I would always make sure that my reins are not getting knotted up behind me. So you want to make sure that you're able to grab and then throw your reins out, grab, throw your reins out, never mixing up these two. So whenever my hands come together, I might just put my uh, index finger up and so that my index finger is always separating these two. And I would practice doing this with both hands because as you are ground driving, especially young horses that haven't done this before, you need to make sure that you know that your blue rein is going to always end up in your left hand and that in this case my orange rein is always going to end up in my right hand so that if I'm having trouble I'm not ever confused as to what's going on. Now you could practice uh, getting closer to your horse or in this case the wall in two ways. If you've done some driving before you'll know that you shouldn't really cross your hands to go and move your reins. So in order to stop doing that, what you would do is you would, again, put your 
index finger through, separate, and then you're pulling back, and I'm stepping forward as I do that. So as I bring my reins together, even here I want to make sure I'm separating and pulling back. So my left hand stays neutral all the time, and I'm adjusting the rein. Now, what happens if I've got my orange rein and it's, it's clearly much looser than my blue rein? As I come here, I would just grab my orange rein and not pull the blue rein back. And that's very important because as you start to make your corners with your ground driving, you're going to find that one rein is going to slide through your hand fantastically quickly, five, six, seven, eight feet, and you're going to need to make an adjustment as you're coming straight. So I'm going to go ahead and just back up here, and I'm going to let these reins slide through my hand. And I'm going to practice that again. So I'm going to go ahead and grab, move forward, grab, move forward. This time I'm going to try to make sure that my orange rein equals my blue rein, and then keep adjusting, keep adjusting. And then I'm going to slide back again. And you need to allow your horse to move forward at times, and you're going to really allow them to take some slack out of your reins. Now, again, if you've done some carriage driving, you'll recognize that what I'm saying here is that only one hand gets to move and there is no crossing. However, when you are ground driving, you'll need to be able to do this as well. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to, again, my index finger is going to separate and then I'm going to go forward and then I'm going to come forward. So now my right hand is going to be neutral and I'm going to come forward. So I am, as I'm ground driving horses, I'm going to fake it a little bit because I don't have the same rules as a carriage driver. <clears throat> and you'll also want to practice doing it with your opposite hand as well. So, I tend to like to have my ropes off to one side like so, and again, I can just move forward, move forward. I always know which rein is which because I'm always going to separate, be able to separate into each one. I'm going to move back again, and then be able to cross over here as well. Again, you can see that I'm stepping on my rope, and then I'm pushing it off to the side, but I'm also separating them. So I'm not just picking up this and throwing it over in any old random way. I'm throwing the blue over and then the orange so that I know exactly where each one is. Moving forward, moving forward. If I need to, cross over a couple times. Again, if I've got one rein that is looser than the other, practice coming forward and adjusting one rein and then the other. These seem like simple concepts, but once you're moving with a horse, they get a little bit more complicated. The Vienna rein. The Vienna rein is going to be a, another way that you can get from just doing some groundwork with a halter to getting to the point where ground driving is going to be much easier for your horse to understand. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my long line and I'm going to go through my stirrup, which are tied together, my stirrups, and then I'm going to clip to the bit on just one side. And uh, this is going to give your horse a sense of feeling that bit now moving uh, her, ho or her head from side to side. And this is important now. You only have control of your horse on one side. I do not have my second rein here. And if you've done your groundwork, this shouldn't be too terrifying for you. Because now if I get to the point where if I'm in the wrong position and she turns around, well, now I don't have any control at all. So I need to make sure that I'm staying on this side of my horse, on the on side of her. And I would go ahead and do the very same groundwork that you did before with the halter. Hey, sweetie, wake up. Good girl. So I'm going to ask her to move off. And again, I'm using the same body position techniques that I did earlier. And then just a little bit of a pull right there. You've got to remember that when you have a bit in your horse's mouth, you can be much softer with your communication than with that halter. So again, I need to stay where this the saddle is. I'm going to just move her over. Good girl. And I'm going to see if she can move over. Oh, she's not going to really make it. And that's okay. But you can see that I've got all of this extra rope now to navigate. I'm going to try to move her out. Move her out move her out. And what she's doing is she's just ever so slightly bumping into that rope and continuing to turn. Now I'm going to tighten it up just a little bit. Good girl. Turning. Turning. 
And it's never too early to work on your horse's footfall. So the only time that I really want to pull my rope is when that inside hind leg hits the ground, which is right now, right now, because that's when that foreleg is in the air. So if I give her just a little bit of a cue now, and now, and now, the idea is how quietly can you cue your horse and get them to do what you're asking. I would cue now, and I'm just gently pulling her head over, and again I have no support on the other side because I just have my Vienna rein. So do this slowly at the walk, and I would urge you as well to do these initial, I'm going to get ahead of her now, because I know if I do that's going to shut her down. So I don't have any halt power right there. I'm just getting in her way to close her down. Good girl. And I'm going to go ahead and unhook the Vienna rein here, slide through, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to come through, I'm going to throw my rope away, come through the stirrup, connect to the bit here, and do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to get my rope organized, never do anything until you are completely ready to move your horse off. You don't want to be standing there with confusion in your hands, knots in your rope. And here I go, I'm going to take a few steps back, swing my rope, and then let her know, hey, we're on this side now. Good girl. Good girl. And now that I've got her back on the square, I don't want to be randomly moving around. Now these initial exercises you should be doing in the round corral. And we are going to move into the round corral in the next few segments when I start doing the ground driving. The round corral is going to help you, the handler, because it will allow you to make a lot more mistakes. I'm in an open arena right now, and so if Katie wants to really push things, or if she were not used to this at all, we might have a little bit more trouble with some of this. You can see she has a little bit more trouble moving in this direction. This is her bad direction. Horses often have a good side and a bad side. Good girl. And again, I'm going to wait for her to kind of catch up to me. Good girl. I'm going to ask her to trot. Good girl. I'm just going to make a smaller square. Just let her know that this Vienna rain shouldn't be anything that she's going to be too concerned about. And again, when I want to get her to walk, I'm going to get ahead of that saddle area just a little bit because my body position is causing her to slow down and then to stop. So the point of ground driving is not to teach your horse how to yank and turn and stomp down. It's that you're using your body language already to say, look, now I want you to know what it feels like to be turned with these long lines. So you can always fall back on your body language before you start trying to muscle your horse down. Ground driving, part one. We're going to start in the round corral. And again, once you've got your saddle set up, you've got your stirrups tied together, you've worked through all the groundwork exercises, you've done some Vienna rain, then it's time to go ahead and see what you can do here. So I'm going to go ahead and connect one side, and I'm going to make sure that my rope is properly looped here. This will be the last time, I'm sorry, I'm coiling my rope, it'll be the last time that I coil my rope. And I know that Katie is going to be pretty good about standing still because she has learned that when we have work to do, we work, and when there isn't any work, she'll have a tendency to want to stand still. So now that I have that side set up, I'm going to go over, set up this side, and I have, of course, two different colored reins so that I can talk specifically about what I'm doing. As I set this up, I don't want there to be any tension on my horse's mouth until I'm ready to do some ground driving. So I'm going to go ahead and coil up my rope, and I'm going to go ahead and take this and make sure that I've got the right line that's hitting her mouth. Now as I go back here, again, you want to make sure that you're not going to get kicked, and I want to double check everything. 
Make sure that my lines are in fact going to her mouth. And then I'm going to go ahead and make sure my ropes are on either side. Now as she starts moving, I'm going to put these ropes on probably my inside. Now I tend not to like to carry a whip, but I'm going to say, here we go, I'm going to give her a cluck cluck, walk off, and I'm going to send her off into the blue ring. Good girl. And again, your horse may not be used to being pushed around from the back. When they can't see you, sometimes horses get a little bit upset about that. And right now I'm standing between my two reins because I am more or less behind my horse. And for the first little bit of ground driving, this is plenty. You don't have to worry about steering. Your, your round corral is going to do a lot of the work for you. Now here I might just say, look, I want you to go back to the rail. So I'm going to use my orange rein just a little bit. And horses will often think that when they feel a little bit of pull like that, maybe it is halt pressure. And so give your horse a little cluck cluck, a little click click, and keep them moving along. Now here again, you can practice kind of letting your horse go out so that your reins get longer. So I'm going to slow down my feet, kind of push my reins out. Good girl. And then I'm going to practice moving up my rein. Remember, stay out of your horse's kick zone. So this is a time for you to get used to controlling your rope. Here my blue rope was longer or looser than my orange rope. Your horse now has to get used to feeling these ropes against their legs like so. So this is a time to just practice this without getting too involved. Good girl. Now I've got some cones set out here so that I can at least let Katie know that we're not just randomly walking in a circle. I'm going to say, look, we are going to turn around that cone. Good girl. Just give her a little pull, a little pull. And again, if I oversteer, she's going to turn in too quickly. If I understeer, the round crowd is going to give her a little bit of a turn, 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 turn. Good girl. And now that I know that she can turn to the left, I'm going to say, look, let's go to the opposite direction. So I'm going to come through the center, give her plenty of time to stretch out, and now just give her a little bit of orange and orange rein. And again, look at those feet. See if you can't pull your orange rein when the inside foreleg is in the air. So it's right there. Right there. Good girl. Now remember, if I decide, oh, you know, I really like to be right here and see my horse, well, that's going to shut her down. So your, your body position is paramount here. You're also having to hold those reins up and over the hawk because you don't want your horse to step under. Good girl. And we're turning, we're turning, we're turning. Good girl. Again, that blue rope has kind of come down over the hawk. And now I'm going to just say slow down, slow down, and stop. I'm going to let those reins slide out of my hand. And we've got the first little bit of ground driving. Good girl. And as she moves away, I want to keep my position back here. I don't want her to turn around and look at me. Now for some horses that's going to be difficult. And I'm going to again keep my ropes out of the way. Try to make sure that as I'm moving around, I'm not randomly pulling on my ropes. Good girl. Until she settles down. Good girl. In the next segment, we're going to go ahead and move the gate up, do a little bit of trotting, and uh, show you how to maneuver that. Trotting while ground driving. So I've got Katie all set up. We've done a few laps here. We did a change of direction. Now I'm going to see if I can't get her to move just a little bit faster. Good girl. Again, as I'm swinging my rope around, giving her a little tag, I want to make sure that I'm not accidentally yanking on her mouth in any way. Now, again, you can decide if you want to have ropes on either side of you like this, or if you'd prefer to have them to the outside or to the inside. I will tend to like them to the inside, sometimes to the outside. I generally don't like them on either side. So, as you're asking for your initial trot, you'll have all of this experience with your ground driving, and with your Vienna rain. 
So you need not think about driving so much first. It's more about getting your horse used to that outside rain. I want you to see, as she starts to trot, how much of the rain is pulling out of my hand. So I'm not trying to keep her locked into these reins. I'm giving her plenty of space to just get used to this orange rain being back there on her hawk. Now if it's too loose, oh, it's going to fall down, it's going to bug her. If it's too tight, she's going to pull her head and constantly be arcing or stopping. So you need to find a nice, easy spot for it. And you can see how much adjusting I'm doing with my hands as well. So as we come around this time, we'll see if we can't do a change of direction. Trot, trot. Turn, turn, turn. Good girl. Turn, turn. And I would have preferred to come directly through the center, but it didn't happen. And right now I'm not worried about it because my round corral is really helping me out. Good girl. So again, she's really kind of getting far away from me. See if I can't just get that nose to come over to me just a little bit. So now the blue rope is on her hawk. Good girl. Turn, turn, turn. Blue, blue. Good girl. And off she goes. So just simple changes of direction. You're not looking to control every moment. Let your round corral do a little bit of the work for you. Good girl. And when we graduate from the round corral into the arena and then into the real world, then you're going to have to control a whole lot more. In the next segment, we're going to do a little loping in the round corral, and then I will show you how to unravel all of this. The lope in the round corral. And you'll, of course, want to work up all your gates. You want to make sure that you have plenty of control with your horse on the ground, doing your ground driving, that you can move your horse through the gates, that you've done it with the Vienna rein in the round corral, preferably even in the arena with the Vienna rein before you're coming in here with two ropes. So I'm going to ask her to trot first. Good girl. And again, Katie is trained to move off at the lope with a smooch. So I'm going to go ahead and kiss as the outside hind leg hits the ground, which is now, now. Good girl. And again, really let those reins slide through your hands. You need not control things. You're just trying to get your horse used to these flying reins, you see how it hits her hawk and kind of flies around? And I'm going to ask her to trot, trot. Good girl. And all I did was very lightly squeeze my hands. We'll see if we can go in the other direction. I'm going to say, ready? Turn, 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 turn. Good girl. Turn. Trot, trot, trot. Good girl. See if we can't get a lope in the opposite direction. Now my blue rope is slightly shorter than my orange rope. When the outside hind leg hits the ground, I'm going to smooch, which is now, now. And Good girl. A little bit more bothered in this direction. And I'm going to say trot. Just light pulses on my hand. Good girl. Little half halts. Let her trot. Turn, turn, turn. Turn, turn, turn. Oh, so close. Trot, 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 trot. Good girl. And a little half halt, half halt. Good girl. So there's my walk. And I'm going to walk her now. Turn to the middle. Good girl. Walk, walk, walk. She just caught sight of a little peacock walking next to her there. Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. I'm just letting her pull those reins very gently out of my hand. And I'm giving little half halts. And now I want to make sure that I take the pressure off of that rein. And now in the next segment, we'll talk about unraveling and getting your horse out of all of this because what are you going to do? 
you're back here with all this line in your hands. Taking your ropes off of your horse after you've done some ground driving. Right now, Katie is plenty happy to stand still, and since I'm working alone, this is the way that I would take my ropes off. If I were working with a horse that had a little bit too much energy, I would ask someone to assist me and hold on to, I would still have a halter on the horse as well as the bit, and I would ask them to hold the front of the horse. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be very clear that I've dropped my orange line, and with my blue line, as I walk up, I'm going to loop it up, and I'm going to take it off of the bit, come through the stirrup, and then attach it again to the bit. So now I have some reasonable control over my horse if something would happen, if I want to say quit looking over there because I don't want you obsessing. And now I'm going to step over here. I'm going to take off the rein on the opposite side come through and now I have just one rein on my horse. Now, since I know that Katie is pretty desensitized to most everything, I would use this as a chance to further desensitize her by coiling my rope up and pulling it through her legs. And if she was now all of a sudden really nervous, then I would know that I've got more work to do with her legs. So at this point I could either just hang this up on my saddle if I felt like she was going to maybe move off, I might tie it using my strings, but I'm not going to at the moment. And that is how I would unravel myself from my long lines. Hi, how are you doing? Again, if I felt that Katie was, or the horse that I was working with, had a little bit too much energy, I would still have a halter on the horse and I would ask someone to hold on and make sure that everyone was safe. The most important thing is to unhook from your bit and come back through your stirrups as quickly as possible without having to do the opposite. Now I know that Katie's not going to flip out about this because she's done it all enough, but now there's just too much time that goes into this. Oh my gosh, 10, 15 seconds, and then the rope is, you know, making noise on the stirrup. And so the better option is to come through and detach from the bit and come through the stirrup and then reattach to the bit. So that all takes about three seconds, and then you're good to go. And that's how I would go ahead and take those ropes off. Ground driving in the arena. Now that you've done all of the basics in the round corral, it's time to move to the arena. Now, before I'm going to drive her in the arena, I want to make sure that she's desensitized to the arena as well. So I've got a lead rope, I've got a halter on her, and what I would do is walk this area and really kind of throw your lead rope around, smack things hard, making sure that she has no reaction to anything. And uh, Katie normally is going to be pretty comfortable in this arena. It's her home arena. But still, if she's jumping around, you don't want to take that on when you're ground driving her. Because as you're in the arena, you are now having to control both of those reins. The round corral which was there helping you with that outside rain especially, is no longer there to help you. And you're going to have to control your horse. The last thing you want is a horse jumping around, spinning, getting caught up in your ropes. So you need to make sure that you're looking at any sort of strange, unforeseen sounds, obstacles, and you would want to spend a lot more time desensitizing. But when your horse is pretty calm, walking about, then uh, that's the time to go ahead and grab your ropes and start your ground driving. So again, you want to make sure at this point that you've done all of the desensitizing with your ropes. You want to make sure that, girl, you know how to set up your saddle, tie your stirrups together. You're going to want to make sure that you've chosen the right bit. I'm always recommending either a full cheek snaffle or a D-ring. If you're going to use the full cheek, do not use the keepers. The keepers will send that bit back so that it can actually pull through the horse's mouth. Once you can do that, you want to make sure that in the round corral, you're able to do all of your ground work. Uh, put that Vienna rein on, which is just the one rein going through the stirrup and into the bit. And then in the round corral, make sure that you can walk and you can trot and you can lope and that you have some changes of direction. Then you're ready to come into the arena. Make sure that your horse is comfortable in the arena by doing some desensitizing with your rope and obstacles. And when those things are finished and complete and you're comfortable, your horse is comfortable, then you're going to start your ground driving. Circle in the arena. 
now that you're ready to go in the arena, uh, what I would do is make sure that you have a rope halter on underneath your bridle so that if anything does go wrong, you can unclick uh, and get back onto your halter. So before I start, then I would go ahead and set things up. So I would unclip from my halter. And again, I'm giving my Katie here a moment that she could really uh, take off on me. But again, if you're dealing with a horse that really is already taking off on you, you probably have a little bit more groundwork to do. So now I have my blue rein, which in this case is going to be my inside rein. My orange rein will be the outside rein. And my advice is when you're first going to go in the arena in your first circle, you're going to want to head into a corner. Easy, sweetie. And uh, again, make sure that your ropes are organized. I'm going to pull my orange rein to say, I'm not sure why you're turning in like that. But I want to head into the corner so that if anything is going to transpire, the corner is at least going to help me initially to shut her down. I don't want to start in one corner and head into the middle of the arena. I want to at least have a corner where I can really turn her in and try to shut her down before it gets to be a problem. So again, get your ropes organized. I'm going to ask her to walk off. I'm not concerned about a you know, peppy walk off here. I want her to walk. And I'll swing my rope. Good girl. Just a slight little pull on my blue rein and then supporting with my orange rein, which is my outside rein. You'll want to start on just a very small 15 meter, 20 meter circle. Just pull your blue rein just a little bit every once in a while. Again, if you're to the point where you're thinking about your horse's feet, I want to pull my blue rein when my horse's inside leg hits the ground, which is right now, right now. That's when her foreleg is in the air, which is right now, right now. Good girl. I just want to keep her at a walk and get a sense of letting these reins slide out of your hand so I can slow my feet down, my horse can keep moving. And as she goes away, I'm just allowing those reins to slide through my hand. Remember, you don't want to be any closer to that hind quarter than you need to be. You want to stay out of that kick zone. If your horse slows down a little bit too much or if you're too hard with your reins, just give them a little click click. Sometimes I'll give a click when I am pulling the rein as well to say don't confuse this with a halt or a half halt. I'm saying turn, ready? And turn, good girl. Now, once you're comfortable going in one direction, then you can do a very simple stop. And as I'm coming through, I'm gonna say, slow down, slow down. I'm just squeezing my fingers, squeezing my fingers. And then I would go ahead and make my change of direction from a halt to a walk into the opposite direction. So you're not ready to walk through a change of direction yet. So we're gonna go to the left. And now, as I change direction, my orange rein will be my inside rein. Pull, pull, good girl. And I wanna be nice and calm. Pull, pull. And you're gonna notice, again, that your horse is gonna steer in one direction more easily than the other. Here, when I pull my orange ring, she almost snaps to the right. She just doesn't have the flexibility going to the right as she does going to the left. Good girl. And to the right. Good girl, to the right. Try to keep your rope above that hawk. Turning. Let her walk. And we are turning now. Turning now. Good girl. And then when I want her to slow down, slow down, slow down, I'm looking at those front feet, just giving a little pull each time they hit. Good girl. And I want to make sure that I stay back here. So there it is, our first walk, our first little circle in the arena. Start in the corner, go slowly. The square. Once you've got your circle sorted out, go ahead and put four cones down and start on your square. And the trick to the square Let's go, sweetie. Good girl. Is, don't worry about each and every cone. Good go. And my goal is to walk from cone to cone while Katie's <clears throat> pattern is going to be about five meters away from the cone. And 
you want to make sure that, again, you are waiting for that saddle area to get ahead before you go to the next cone. Otherwise, your body language is going to get in the way of your ground driving. So as I'm getting here, I'm saying turn, turn, turn. I have to wait and, and then move on at the right time. Again, your groundwork skills are key here. Remember, you've got an awful lot of rope to manage here. I prefer to let the ropes be on either side of my hip as I'm walking. I'm trying to manage just enough of this orange rain over her hawk without it falling down and without it being so tight that she pulls her head to the outside, which is what she's doing, a little bit to the outside. Good girl. And squeeze and cue, cue. And you'll be amazed at how much these ropes are going out of your hands, especially on these corners. My orange rain probably adjusts about four feet. Good girl. And I'm going to do a very simple change of direction here. I'm going to ask her to slow down and halt before I do that. Slow down, slow down. So I don't want her to walk through it yet. Good girl. I'm going to use my orange rain. Tell her to walk off again. And so now my orange rain is giving the cue for the bend. We're bending. And your spine should follow your feet. Bend, or your feet should follow the bend of your spine. Good girl. Now I got a little behind her there. But now I'm on my path. And remember, this is Katie's much harder side. A little bit of incentive to move on there. So I'm trying to keep my blue rain nice and calm. And my goal is to get to the next cone on my line. So I'm not walking behind her anymore. Good girl. And again, just trying to manage that blue rain. I'm not worried about her putting her head down too far. Not right now. Good girl. And I'm going to ask her to go ahead and slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Good girl. Once you can do your square, then you're ready to do your changes of direction through the walk rather than stopping and changing. And you'll do that on the square as well. A change of direction. So as you've worked your square, then go ahead and continue on your square. I would always urge you to walk your horse and change direction into the rail and uh, or to you know the outside of your arena. So as she comes through this cone, I'm going to send her back the opposite way. Squeeze. I'm cueing with my orange ring now. With it now. Now. And then, as she's going straight, I'd fall in behind her and give her a pull on the blue now. Good girl. And I'm not going to worry about her going too slow right now. I'm going to pull and pull. Good girl. I can fall to the side again. And cue now, and now, and now, and now, and now. Good girl. As she's going straight, I would fall in behind her. And do another change of direction. Orange rain, and now. Cue now. Good girl. So she's making sense of that. Turning, turning. If you pull too hard, you're going to pull your horse's head off to the side, and they're just going to fall to the side. Walk, walk. Good girl. Each time that that front leg is in the air, which is right now, right now. And remember, I cannot get in front of her. My body position is very important. That's why you want to make sure you're working those ground skills so that you know 
that your body position is not causing an undue problem. Blue rain. Now. Now. Good girl. My orange rain is saying to my horse, don't bend too much. Turn, but don't bend too much. Turn, but don't bend too much. Turn. Good girl. And again, I'm going to ask for my halt, which is slow down, slow down, slow down. Each time the front legs hit, I'm giving just a small pull, giving her a chance to come in and find some semblance of square. Serpentining in the arena. Now that you've got your square down and your simple changes of direction using the square, then go ahead and set some cones up. And do not put them too far apart. The idea here is you're going to have a lot of rain to navigate here. If you've not done a lot of ground driving before and you've just been riding, you only adjust your reins, you know, maybe 12, 18 inches once in a while if your horse stretches their neck. But now you're going to have a lot of rain. So right now my orange rain is pulling out. But as I straighten her, my blue rain is going to go zinging out of my hand. Good girl. And don't be surprised if your horse is going to stop just like that. Q, Q, go straight, and Q to the left, Q, and now I'm going to make a full circle, red, or orange rain rather, orange rain, orange rain, good girl, send her in to the rail, trying to make sure that I'm not pulling on that blue rain, I know that I can feel my reins, here we go sweetie, on uh, my leg so I know where they're at, I want to be able to hear those reins dragging on the ground. I would urge you not to tie them together behind you, otherwise you're just making yourself a slingshot if your horse would take off. And I know that some reins, the long reins, uh, come with a clip in the middle, They're really inviting you to tie them together or click them together. But I would urge you not to do that. And, you know, get used to doing this a few times. I'm going to make just a slightly larger circle here. Come back around my good girl. Come back around my cone, orange rain, orange rain, blue rain, blue rain, go straight, and blue rain, cueing now, cueing now, and orange rain, orange rain, good girl, a little bit more orange rain right now, and now, and blue rain just to straighten, and now blue rain to turn, which is now, a little orange rain to straighten her, blue rain, Blue rain, blue rain, good girl. So I'm working very specifically with her feet as I'm going through the uh, serpentine cones here. You want to make sure that you've got this serpentine down at the walk before you start working your horse at the trot and at the lope or the canter because you're really going to have to rely on your outside rain at those higher gates. Good girl, Katie the trot in the arena. Now that you've worked through all of the previous exercises, you're ready to go ahead and try your first trot. And <clears throat> again, think about working on a circle or a square preferably so that both you and your horse get used to this idea of letting your horse go straight and then you having to turn and then saying nothing to your horse and then asking for a turn. And I would urge again that right now would not be the opportune time for me to ask for my trot because I'm sending her into the open arena and I would at least like her to realize that you're going to run into the wall if you take off. So as I come through this corner, again, not the best opportunity to start my trot with a young horse. Now with Katie, I could do this, but I'm not going to, just for safety reason. All this time I can just work on my walk, practice cueing at the proper time, which is now, which is now. I'm going to ask for my trot as the outside hind leg hits the ground, which is right. Good girl. Make sure that you are not wrapped into your rope, like right there. I got a little distracted there. And we're back on our square. Good girl. Now as she's trotting, my square gets smaller. Just like in your ground exercises. Good girl. I don't have to do as much work the faster that my horse moves. Now you can practice your cueing as well. When the inside hind leg hits the ground, 
Now, now. Good girl. Q, Q. Inside hind leg hits the ground. Now, now, now. Good girl. Just telling her to keep moving. And now I'm going to ask her to walk by saying, slow down, slow down. Good girl. Walk, walk, walk. And I'm going to go ahead and ask her to change direction. And <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and ask her to go to the center. Straighten her out with my orange rein. And then off we go in the opposite direction. Let's go. Walk, walk. She's saying, hey, we already went. Good girl. Trot, trot. Or move, move anyway. So again, the proper time to pick up my trot would be on this next straightaway here. I'm going to go ahead and get my blue rein organized. Give her the click as the inside hind leg hits. And good girl. Just use as much rein as possible. Q, Q. Q. And you again can see that my body position is kind of pushing her out. I don't necessarily want to steer her with my blue rein. I want my body position to do a lot of this work. So as I speed up, I'm saying, hey, get away from me. Again, each time that I come through, I'm having to adjust my reins. Cueing, cueing, my blue rein pulls out, and I adjust it. The blue rein's going to pull out, and then I take it back in. Good girl. As I want to ask for my transition downward, I'm going to squeeze my hands gently. Now, 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 now. Good girl. Slow down, slow down, and come to a halt. So we have the trot in both directions. And of course, you can start doing a little bit of serpentining at the trot as well. Change of direction at the trot. Now that you've got your trot in both directions, we're just going to go ahead and do the change. I want to make the change coming through this way into the wall and uh, give Katie plenty of time to make her decision to change. So I'm going to swing this. Off we go. We're going to walk. And turning. Good girl. Remember, you don't have to do all these things on the first day. For a young horse, you want to do a lot of ground driving so they get used to the feel of that bit and what is going to happen. So that when you jump on their back for the first time, there is no confusion about what the bit feels like in the horse's mouth, that it pulls them from side to side, that it asks for some halt pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and ask for my trot again. When the inside hind leg hits the ground. Good girl. Now here I'm going to stop my feet, turning, turning, turning. Now blue rain, burning, turning, turning. Good girl. Try to go to the outside. Oh, she did it for me. She's the greatest. And we're turning, 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 turning. And orange rain. Now, now, now. Good girl. Orange rain. Now. Now. Orange rain, orange rain, orange rain, orange rain, orange rain. Blue rain, blue rain, blue rain, blue rain. Good girl. And we blew the cone there. And that's okay. Blue rain, blue rain, blue rain, blue rain, blue rain. Blue rain and orange rain, orange rain. Again, there's a lot of rope to navigate here. Orange, 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 blue, 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 much better. Orange, 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 good girl. And there she just kind of calmed down. Slow down, slow down, good girl. Which means keep walking, and now you can slow down your walk. Very nice. Those are your changes of direction at the trot. Give your horse plenty of time. This might be a little bit small for you on this particular square. But again, try to go into a wall rather than into the middle of the arena because if your horse panics, they at least have to turn one way or the other. 
and, uh, and then you'll have a little bit more control of those ropes. A lope while ground driving in the arena. Again, the difference between your lope and your canter is that since Katie is wearing a western saddle today, the gait is called the lope. If she were wearing a dressage or an English saddle, the same gait would be called the canter. So we're going to call it a lope today. And I'm going to ask for my trot. Good girl. I would ask for my lope in the same way that my other gates, I want to ask for it as she's going into the corner or into the rail. Good girl. I want to be very careful with my reins. Cueing, cueing. Good girl. You can see the harder that she works, the less hard that I work. Cueing, cueing. Whoops, she's picked up a little bit of crossfire there. I'm going to ask her to walk, trot rather. And then again, just ask her to fix her feet. So don't let your horse move in an unnatural gait. And you can see that she's really pushing me as she gets to the open side of the arena. So I might ask her to say, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Good girl. And I'm going to ask her to trot, 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 trot. Good girl. Trot, trot, trot. Good girl. Ask for a little change of direction. Walk, walk. Good girl. So each of these gates should progress so that as you're getting to your trot and your lope, here we go, I'll ask if she's heading against the rail here. Q, 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 good girl. Q, Q, walk, trot, 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 trot. I'm just squeezing gently with my hands. So it slows down her gait until she finally breaks gait. Good girl. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Good girl. And keep her walking just a little bit. Slow down, slow down, come to a halt. Ask her maybe to back up just a little bit. And you can see that even Katie at the lope has gotten a little bit of extra energy. Oh, good girl. I'm going to try to stay behind her. Try to turn her just a little bit. And these are the things that you'll need to manage as you start doing your ground driving because your horse is going to get that extra energy. And the whole point of training a horse is to train them that a trot is just a trot. They shouldn't use it as an excuse to get all full of adrenaline. And more than that, a lope or a canter is just a lope or a canter. And uh, again, you could see that Katie was cheating me when she would get to the open side of my square because there's a chance that she could break free of me and take off. That's why I'm urging you to work in a corner. And again, be ready for problems if they happen. And it's not the end of the world if they do, but there is a great chance for danger as you're moving up your gates. So be careful at your trot. Be especially careful as you're loping. Preparing for ground driving outside of the arena. Once you've worked your round corral and your arena, then it's time to think about going out into the real world. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep Katie on my long line. You can use a short line initially if you want, but I would walk your horse everywhere on your property and feel free to make commotion and move around obstacles, trees, this sort of thing. Again, if your horse is having spooking issues, it's not the time to drowned drive them. You'll need to do a lot of work with obstacles. Here we got a bridge. I'm going to stomp on it, ask her to walk over it. If there is any complaining, I would not try to dro ground drive her across a bridge like this. Here again, I'm going to kind of stomp on it first to let her know that it's going to be there. And what I'm feeling for on my rope is if she throws her head up, I know that that can be a problem for me when the ground driving starts. Now she has a friend back there, Jody, that is 
nickering to her. Now here's a chicken here. Is she going to jump away when this chicken goes somewhere? Hey, chicken. Hey. I'm going to kind of walk over these tarps. I'm not going to necessarily expect that she's going to follow me up here, but I want to make sure that she's not going to have a problem with that. So at the very least, you need to make sure that your horse is comfortable enough being led in the area that you're going to start your ground driving. The point of it is not to desensitize your horse. It is to, again, allow them to feel what it's like to have to navigate through the real world without a rider on your horse's back. Good girl, Katie. Next up, we'll go ahead and ground drive her through the property and, uh, and see how she does. Ground driving outside of the arena. Now that I've got my reins all set up, it's time to go ahead and see how Katie's going to do in the real world. So again, I want to make sure that my ropes are controlled. I'm going to go ahead and just swing this, give her a little cluck cluck, and ask her to walk off. Now, again, you need to give yourself a lot of time to make adjustments. When I'm going through these two trees, for example, my goal is to go exactly through the center so that if there is any problem at all, I have a lot of leeway. As I'm heading down to the first little bridge here, I'm going to try to get her organized now, now saying we're going over that bridge so that if she overshoots it, now we're swinging back and forth. There, now I don't have to say anything. She knows the bridge is there, and I'm going to say, we're going to go to the right. Good girl. Now my ropes, turning, turning, good girl, are dragging on the ground. There's a bunch of leaves. These are all things that, again, can really affect my horse. I need to make sure that if I'm going to have my ropes dragging like so, that they're not going to get caught up on a rock or a stump. So as I'm moving, I want to assess what's going on with the ground. So you've got a lot on your mind now. You're trying to steer your horse. You're trying to make sure your horse is relaxed. And keep moving. We're going to take a left and go down the road. There we go. And turning. Good girl, turning. And there's no reason to make things go really fast. I've already walked her by the tarps. I'm not going to ask her to necessarily move away from them right now. Especially as her head is down, she's doing a nice top line stretch. And head down into an area. Right now I might ask her to move towards the barn rather than away, just so that she feels like she's going for the comfort of home. And then I'll say, all right, now we're going to go off to the opposite side. So I'm using my orange. And I have a fairly big area here, orange rain. I might do a circle or two. Again, I want to make sure that my ropes, I'm constantly kind of trying to see where they're at, kind of get them out of her way. Good girl. And turning, turning, turning. And I am trying to keep my hands in front of me. Sometimes when people are doing their ground driving, Oh, they're trying to not really adjust their reins, but they got their arms all over the place doing this kind of thing. I want to try to make sure that my hands stay in front of me and that I can adjust my rein here, but that I have control with my left hand. So as I come forward, whenever I feel like I'm losing control of my ropes, if I feel like I have to really steer with two hands, I'm right there to do it rather than trying to steer back here. Good girl. And we'll walk straight again. We have a nice, cool evening. And as Katie gets even quieter, I might stomp my feet to say, hey, are you even paying attention? Kind of throw my rope up here a little bit. And she's clearly nice. And as your horse is starting to line out a little bit more, you can slow your feet down. Practice having a really long rein. So I'm just letting the reins slide through my hand. Up ahead, I can see the same deer that were bugging her earlier. So she might throw her head up and look at them really quickly. And I see, oh, I don't know, eight deer up there. This again, if she would spook and spin and turn and run back down into me, 
would not be an ideal situation. That's why you want to make sure that your horse is plenty desensitized as you are moving off into the real world. And then as you're entering back into an area where your horses are familiar, you can hopefully they're nice and calm about this. Good girl turning and now straightening with my orange, but now turning with my blue, straightening with my orange. And slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, letting those reins slide through my hands. You might ask your horse to back up a little bit. Good girl. Again, I want to make sure that I'm in control of my ropes, getting them out of the way, asking her to back up. I'm not pulling hard, I'm just jiggling, jiggling, jiggling. Good girl. The point of the ground driving is not necessarily to put your horse into a cart, but it's so that your horse really gets used to how that bit is going to work in its mouth and the desensitizing of the ropes, especially on those legs and at those higher gates. So don't press a horse too quickly. Even though this entire DVD or these segments will be 45 minutes to an hour and a half, it might take me a month to get a horse to the point where I'm going to be comfortable taking them out and driving them in the open area. But it really goes a long way when you're going to start riding a horse when they are ready to deal with just the weight of the rider and the leg cues and this kind of thing. So give your horse every opportunity to learn what that bit is going to be all about.